All right, guys, so today we are doing some more photo stuff. Yep, but we're not getting necessarily into the photos application too much yet. Not really. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the photos application on the Mac and a little bit on the phone slash iPad um, in regards to how it works with iCloud because there's two really big features in there. So there's actual uh, photos for the cloud or iCloud photos. I can't remember what it's called. And then photo streaming. Uh, and, and we want to kind of understand the differences between those why you should use one, why you don't want to use one, how they operate, etc, etc. We did a cloud or an iCloud video a little while ago, but we kind of omitted a little bit of the photos stuff because I figured it was a much bigger topic and uh, that's what we're going to get into now. So we're going to head over, well, we're going to turn around we're going to come to my computer right here and we're going to look at it right now. So this is, this is your system preferences right here. So you can get it by hitting the little system preferences icon that could be on your dock. Uh, if it's not on your dock, if you click on your Apple, there'll be system preferences there. So you can click on it. Either one, either one is fine. You can, however you want to get to it. Um, but we're first going to click on, you'll see up at the very top where it says your name. Now that's what it should say is your name. And then you'll see Apple ID right beside it. So we're gonna click on that. And then we wanna make sure iCloud is highlighted. And up at the top here, you'll see iCloud Drive and Photos. So this one here is number one. Do we want this on, yes or no, right? Do we want iCloud to have access to the photo library and photo library to have access to iCloud. Um, for me, the simple answer is yes. I want that synchronization to go back and forth between my photos and I want my photos to be able to um, be, well, for one, backed up to the cloud and depending on the features that we enable inside the actual photos application, I want to be able to have all my devices possibly get those photos and videos. So this is kind of part number one is making sure that's turned on. Now, for those of us on an iPhone, for instance, let's just bring up my iPhone here. We're going to do the same thing. I'll just put a, I'll just put a little, I'll move over here, put a little screenshot right here of my phone. And inside the settings right here, same idea. You're going to click on your name and it's a little different in here. There's that iCloud. So same idea, we're just gonna tap on it and you'll see photos and photos has on. Now when you tap on it, this is gonna have a lot more information inside it. Uh, this information that you see here is not available here, right? This, this we would have to get in the photos application, which is what we're gonna do now. So right now, again, there's that toggle switch at the top on your iPhone or iPad that says, do you wanna do this? Do you wanna use iCloud photos? Now. This, this is, we're gonna stop here with the phone. So this, this is going away now, okay? It's just gonna stop here on the phone. Just remember the screen though. Now on the computer, we're gonna close this because again, I, I want this. We're gonna bring up the photos application. So I have that down here somewhere right here. And we can make that a little bigger. It doesn't really matter. We're not really going into photos. What we are doing is going into the photos preferences. Okay, and we'll just kind of move this down here so you guys can see that because that's really what's important right here is the preferences. And you'll see general and you'll see iCloud. Now, if you look at this iCloud and we were to go back to the phone here, I'll bring the phone screen back up here. Now you'll see that this and this look kind of the same, right? So first one is iCloud. Then you have basically the same information here with a few little differences. So we'll talk about the Mac first and then we'll come back to the phone, all right? So stay, stay, be patient, okay? So number one, this is where we have to understand this, iCloud Photos. So if we turn this on, if we turn this feature on, iCloud Photos, what's gonna happen now is any photos that are on this computer, any photos that are on this computer in the Photos app, now they have to be in this app. Now if you have photos sitting on your desktop or photos in your downloads folder or whatever, those aren't going anywhere. This is here. If we turn that on, and if you read this with me, automatically upload and store all your photos and videos in the cloud so you can access them from any, any of your devices and on the web, okay? So here's number one. If you turn this on, and I hear this question a lot, 
What if I want some of my photos to go up there, but not all of them? No, no, no. That's, that's not how this works. Read this again. Automatically upload and store all your photos. Not some of your photos, not just the ones you want. All the photos. All the photos that are here. So this is really important. Do you want that? Okay. Because once you make this, this, this decision, this is not a feature that you turn on and turn off and turn on and turn off and turn on and turn off. You turn it on or you don't. Okay. So once we decide, if we do, that we want that, now this is cool. You have two options that will show up. One is download originals to this Mac or the second is optimize. Download originals means that if you have the space, you should, this is probably a good option. If you have the space, the download originals is good because it doesn't require the internet. If that makes sense. It doesn't require you to have internet connectivity to be able to see all your photos because if you take a picture, it will be here. It'll doesn't matter if you take it on your iPhone or take it and, and import it onto another computer. It'll go up to the cloud and come here. If you import a photo here, for instance, it'll go here and go up, but it'll stay here. Okay. First thing to be aware of just before I get into the other one, no matter what we do, right? doesn't matter if we import this photo on this Mac, if we take the photo on the iPhone, if we import it on an iPad or another Mac, any computer that has this feature turned on with your Apple ID is being synchronized. Okay. So that means if we add a photo on the iPad, it shows up on all of them. Super. If we add a photo here, it shows up on all of them. Super. But if we delete a photo here, it deletes from all of them. And I've seen so many people make this mistake where they turn this feature on and of course all their photos from here end up showing up on their iPhone and they're like, I didn't want that. So what do they start doing? Deleting it from their iPhone. And what does it do here? Deletes from their iMac, right? Because they're in sync. So again, do you want all of them to do that or do you not? Because if you don't, then don't turn this feature on and just pretend like it not, doesn't exist. I like this. Now, for a lot of us, we have devices that have big hard drives like this, and then we have other devices that may have smaller hard drives. So all these photos won't fit necessarily on that or won't fit on your iPhone. So they have this optimize. So what happens is the photos come up to the cloud, your cloud looks at the device and says, all right, well, we'll send small versions to those devices so they're seeable. We'll keep the originals here on the cloud, but your library on your device won't take up much space. Now, if you have a lot of space on your de device, it'll send originals down to it so that you get full resolution. But as that device starts to lose space and has less available, it'll start to optimize harder and harder so that your photo library doesn't fill up. And I'll give you an example. My photo library is massive. It's really, really big. So I even have it optimized here. Um, on my phone, for instance, which only has 128 gigs of storage, my photo library on the cloud is about 700 gigs. That same photo library that is accessible on my phone takes up about maybe 15 or 20 gigs because it's optimizing so heavily. So I like that feature. Just realize that you have to make that decision. Do you want the originals? Do you want to optimize, right? If you have the space, downloading the full version is good. If you don't have the space, optimizing is kind of your only, your only option, really. Now the one below that is shared albums and, and it's, that's really, do you want to be able to share albums with other people? And do you want other people to be able to share albums with you? It's up to you. Uh, you know, I have it on because if I want to share an album with my wife or she wants to share an album with me, we can't. It's not something that goes public, right? You, you still have that control. So kind of be aware of that. Um, that's kind of the iCloud um, features on, on the actual Mac. Nice and easy. There's not a lot to it, right? The big thing is just realizing what you want. Do you want the feature? If so, do you want all the photos to come to that machine or do you want that machine to have optimized? That's really, that's really it on the Mac. Now back here on the actual iPhone, we have that turn that iCloud on, which is the same, 
right? If we have it turned on, we have that optimize and download, which is good because we have that option to choose, right? Then we have a feature here called upload to photo stream and photo stream is only really a feature that you'll see on the smartphones uh, and the iPads and it will take photos that you take, not videos. So just realize this is a photos feature and kind of moves them up to the cloud and then the cloud will push them down here. Now they don't go in sync. They're not synchronizing. They are strictly just moving them. Okay. So they are just moving them around. So the photo, and it doesn't leave this phone, right? It goes up to the cloud, the cloud takes it, pushes it down to this when it turns on. Okay. But it's a cycle. It doesn't even keep them up on the cloud for very long. They'll only stay up on the cloud or this photo stream version of the cloud for about 30 days. So what happens is, let's say I take a photo with this and I have that upload to my photo stream turned on, but I don't have the actual iCloud photos, the iCloud photos turned on. Cause I'm like, I don't want my photos up in the cloud. I don't, I don't have that storage. Cause that's the other thing that you have to realize is that 700 gigs. So I have to pay for that, right? I have to have a two terabyte iCloud service, which I pay whatever, 13, 14 bucks a month for. Maybe I don't want to do that, but I want my photos to come from my phone to here. So I turn on this upload to my photo stream. Cool. So I take a photo. As soon as I get to Wi-Fi, my phone uploads it to the cloud. And then as soon as I turn on the photos app, that photo will come off the cloud onto here. Perfect. But it has to be done within 30 days. Okay. Because it's not a, like a unlimited, infinite free storage. Cause then why would you use iCloud photo library? It is, just to kind of move photos. It won't do videos, photos. So I go out on holidays. I take two weeks of photos, right? Sometimes I used to use that and I'd leave this computer on. And as long as this hit Wi-Fi, they would be uploading and then they'd be downloading here. Very cool. No synchronization. It's strictly just a wireless stream, which is kind of nice. And it's designed again from, to go from mobile. So iPhones and iPads to the computer. That's its real purpose. If you want that synchronizing, if you want that ability to, you know, clean up on here and it cleans up on here, then you want to use the actual full version of the iCloud photos. Does it cost a little bit for some of us? Because a lot of us have really big photo libraries. Sure. For me though, it's, it's a, it's a, it's also a backup, right? Because if something were to happen to this, we actually just had a flood in our basement and we lost, we lost a lot of stuff. Not that I'm saying anything, but we lost some stuff. Now, if this computer would have been down there, and let's say it got in a flood or there's theft or fire or whatever, heaven forbid, um, because I use iCloud photo library, I didn't lose any of my photos. They're all up there. So for me, is that by itself worth like 12, 13 bucks a month? Yeah. Is it for everybody? No. So I leave that up to you. Um, if you do have questions on this, it's, it can be a little confusing. If you have questions on it, leave them down below. And uh, that's it. This is a, it's a, it's, it can be a challenging one to talk about without physically being with you guys while you're looking at your library. Just remember, this is the key. If you turn on the iCloud photos, you are synchronizing and your photos are without question going onto iCloud, all of them. If you don't want that, turn it off. If you use the photo stream, they are coming from your iPhone or iPad and coming down to your Mac. That's kind of it. And it's just photos, no videos. Yes. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you there. As always, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that little bell, and we will see you guys tomorrow morning for some more tech reviews. All right, my friends, I'm out of here. Later, guys.